I ran to the... So I'll tell you what happened today. Oh, my God. I uh, watched the fight late last night. I wasn't there live like Alex. Shout out to Alex. He was there at the fight last night. So he's pretty tired. Uh, I see them partying till the wee hours of the night. <laughs> it's, like five, it's like 4 or 5 a.m. <laughs> and, and I'm like, some of his buddies are still partying over in uh, the after parties of the Jake Paul party, Logan Paul, Floyd Mayweather. They're all out in Miami. So shout out to those guys, guys. Shout out to the Miami crew. So Alex is pretty, pretty hungover right now. I can pretty much imagine. So that's the beauty, man. The beauty is we take over one another. This is the tab. You know, I'm his tab. He's my tab. He helps me out. I was not here Friday. Friday, I got, you know, I just did not want to go to work. <laughs> you know, it's one of those days, guys. It's okay to take days off. I see people posting, oh, it's 2 a.m. No offense to anybody that posts this stuff. Are you studying? I'm like, dude, if you're studying at 2 a.m., what time are you waking up? Sleep is very important, guys. Do not ever, ever, ever deprive your sleep. I actually only slept three hours last night, but then I overslept. I went to bed around 2.30, actually, California time, which is 5.30. Um, so I think I have four hours of sleep. That extra hour actually helped me. I feel fucking magnificent right now. I, I got my I got up at 5 a.m. actually from my alarm, but then I was like, I'm gonna snooze it. Next thing you know, it's like 6.20. 10 minutes before the open, man. California time, that is. So I woke up, I was like, holy shit. And I, dude, when I'm waking up late, all I could think about is stick to the process. So I stuck to the process. You saw all my charts over in Twitter, guys. Knocked it out of the park. Did well, knock on wood. Avoided all of the meme stocks. You know, sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes you don't need to think. Overthinking kills you, man. So I got up really late today. I didn't want to wake up this late, so I was not prepared. But thank God Alex had the watch list out and it had the MIC guys. I'm seeing what people were trading. I just fucking jumped into the, you know, I waited for my lines. And then that's what it was. I waited for my fancy orders to hit. And you saw the charts. And, dude, <laughs> I did today what I used to make an entire day of being an engineer. So actually not a month. I did in one hour of trading, literally one hour of trading using MIC prep that Alex did. He gave me the watch list. So I just traded those ones that are not the mean stocks. And I did in one hour, literally what I used to make an entire month being an engineer. You guys can totally do this. So once again, man, trading is simple, but it's not easy. Being in shape is simple, but it's not easy. Being in shape, what do you do? You eat right, don't snack, sleep well, exercise. It's simple. That's the game plan. But then we all deviate from our process, right, guys? And that's how we get clipped. So it's no different than being a day trader. Being a day trader, you have to be disciplined, just like you want to lose weight. I'm fucking not disciplined in losing weight, so I get fat. I fucking deviate all the time. I was snacking until the wee hours of the night. Uh, so... That's because my priorities are not there, you know? So if your priorities are not there to change your life, to make money, to be financially independent, then you're not gonna fucking do it. That's a simple line of that. And that's why people have these fad diets, right? Same thing with fad diets. Same thing with getting rich quick in the stock market. Oh, I'm gonna load up on this fucking micro penny stock or micro penny crypto i'm gonna get lucky i'm all in i'm gonna get lucky and that's the same thing with a fad diet i'm gonna starve myself for three days go on this keto diet whatever the hell it may be you know and then balloon back up after i <laughs> i know get rich quick or lose weight quick it's the same exact concept guys in order to make it a success it has to be a lifestyle how badly do you want it and here i am i want to tell you right now okay this is monday motivation for you right there some people don't have it. Some people do not have what it takes to become a day trader. Some people do not have it what it takes to become financially independent. Some people just want to be a fucking normal individual. That's not me. I wake up every day. Why do you think I fucking panicked this morning? I jumped out of my fucking bed. Because I do not want to be a normal person. The fear of being mediocre, the fear of being normal, makes me fucking work my ass off 
But I don't have a fear of being fat. You see the difference? Some people have a fear of looking bad. So they wake up and they they exercise. They go to the gym. But they don't fucking have a job. These guys are all ripped, six packs, buff. But they have fucking no money in the bank. But that's their goal. That's their priority. It's okay. I realize I am not going to be a fucking championship bodybuilder. But what I'm going to fucking be is a fucking guy that has money. The guy that's going to help people. The guy that's going to help my family. The guy's going to feed. The guy that's going to be able to walk into any restaurant or anything I fucking want. That's the type of person I want to be. And it's okay that I'm fat. But once again, you have to establish what do you want? What is your priority in life? Some of you guys are half assing it and pretending you want to be financially independent. Some of you are financially broke right now, but rather fucking spend your time at the gym. It's okay. It is okay. I'm not saying it's bad to go to the gym. I'm not saying it's bad not to be financially independent. It's okay. When I was young, when I was poor, when I was a little kid, I didn't fucking care about money. I didn't even know what money was. But the moment I found out that, oh shit, someone's calling me poor, it changed my life. I never knew I was fat until someone called me I was fat. I never knew I was a fucking immigrant and a broke ass immigrant told me that. So once again, guys, it's okay. Figure out what your priority is. So my priority, I've changed my life around ever since that day when I was a kid. I wanted, so my, my whole thing was when I was growing up, I was bullied because I was poor. I was wearing women's fucking girls fucking shoes. I didn't even know it was women's girls shoes. It was just on a clearance bin that my dad bought me. So I was wearing these fucking shoes and they're like, you're wearing fucking girls clothes. And I was wearing, I was riding a girl's bike. I'm like, how the fuck can a bicycle be a girl bike? You know, you the bicycle, they, they have the the bar across with the guy. And the girl has a little dip. And I'm like, what the fuck? Here I am as a kid, very happy that I didn't have a bike. We were poor and I have a fucking bike. It turned out to be my sister's bike or my cousin's bike. who was a girl. And I'm like, what the fuck? This, now, now I'm getting bullied because I have a girl's bike? I didn't even know you had fucking such a thing that you can have a gender basis bike. It's a fucking bicycle. What the fuck? So am I eating cupcake? If I eat a cupcake, is that a girl food? I should only be eating hamburgers? It's fucking weird as shit, right, guys? But that's what that's what it is. So ever since that day, I, I, I made an effort to not get bullied in that sense again. Because I was not a big kid. I was kind of a chubby little kid. But I was a smart kid. And so I used what natural given talents I had, which was my brain. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to be your boss one day, motherfuckers. And one day I'm going to be your boss. You're going to fucking regret bullying me. And that was my whole drive growing up. That one day, one day, and they're not going to fucking laugh at me because I have a girl's bike. They're not going to laugh at me because I have hand-me-down girl shoes. You know? <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, guys. There's a store called Shirt Crazy Shirt or something like that. And they had a 99 cents clearance bin. And the clearance bin was defective shirts that they make custom shirts for people. So that you know they, they, they do the designs for people and they fuck up. And so I fill the shirt into this 99 cent clearance bin. So I bought a shirt that says, Kiss me, I'm I'm Irish or something green or some shit. I didn't know what the fuck that was. I just thought it was a fucking cool shirt of a leprechaun. And then people made fun of me. Oh, you're Irish? You're not fucking Irish, you're some fucking Asian guy. So I, that was another fucking wake-up call. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, dude? I was just happy to have a fucking brand new T-shirt. I, we were poor. We, and I, I'm, I'm telling you the lifestyle of a poor person. I had basically, I think, two different outfits to swap around to go to school when I was young. So beginning of school year, here, you you're, you go to Kmart and you can buy a couple items for school. A couple T-shirts, a couple sweatshirts. And I literally rotated between two or three outfits the entire week. So we wore one outfit, my mom washed the other outfit, and then we would rotate back and forth. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm so fucking happy to get this 99 cents t-shirt. And then people were making fun of me because I'm like, kiss me, I'm Irish or some shit like that. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I thought it was a cool green shirt with a leprechaun on it. I didn't fucking know anything about race and all that stuff. You know? So then that that was when I woke up and said, that's my priority. My priority, my priority is not going to fucking... My priority is going to change. So you're going to have to have some sort of traumatic experience. I hope you do not have a traumatic experience in order for you to realize that you need to get your shit together. Uh, when you grow up, not about being cool anymore. Who gives a fuck if you were riding a fucking girl's bike? If it takes riding a girl's bike to save you money, 
so that you can have fucking money to learn, to educate yourself, to join MIC, to fucking put in your trading account, so be it. I went through three years without going to vacations. I saved my money. I never went out for like three fucking years, dude. I just went on the weekends, you know, saved my fucking money. All my money went back into my trading account during those pivotal times at the beginning when I was losing money. But I was so close. I knew I was so fucking close, guys. I was like, I was so close to breaking this trading code. And no one helped me, obviously, because we didn't have social media back then. You guys are so privileged to have social media. You're so privileged that someone's walking around right now telling you these things. I don't need to walk around. I made enough money where I can fucking chill for the rest of the fucking month in the one hour that I traded using a small fucking account, guys. I used one small hour, <laughs> woke up late, and made more money than most people on this fucking on this fucking planet you know I don't need to make a million dollars a day for life changing guys but I did make in one hour more than what I made as an engineer entire month that's because that that is my fi- priority that's my focus you know last night my focus was watching this this fucking fight between Mayweather and Paul right and so that's why I woke up late and all that stuff but and I snacked so Find out what your purpose is, guys. And I'm gonna, I might be the only one that tells you, quit trading. If you're gonna treat trading as a get rich quick, if you're gonna treat trading as gambling, it's best you not fucking trade at all. Go to the casino, buy a lottery ticket, put all your fucking money in Dogecoin, I don't give a fuck. I mean, that's what it is, man. If you, if you treat it like that, that's what it is. You have to find out what your priorities is. And I do not want you to get to the point where you're on the streets, your parents need money for whatever reason, and you have to fucking go to a GoFundMe account. God forbid that one day I may have to put a GoFundMe account. I do not want to. That is my whole thing. My whole thing is I am not going to beg for money because I am going to make it happen myself. I see these people with these GoFundMe accounts. It's not their fault. That's just because that's their priority. Their priority was not to fucking work hard. Their priority was not to sacrifice. That priority is okay. To beg for money <laughs> for assistance I've helped a lot of people on GoFundMe without telling anybody and I feel bad a lot of the times they're from MIC members who for some reason you know those are the people I love to help the people that because of un unplanned something fucking happened to them it's not because they're lazy guys it's because shit happens in life and when shit happens in life you have to be prepared and this is why I say it's very important it's very important to learn and save money and to have a tab. Imagine you're in MIC. Now you have a wealth of new friends to work with, to trade with, to live life with that have the same goals as you. You're not running around with your fucking guys from fucking high school that are still bullying people, that are still fucking doing nothing with their life. You know, we all grow up, guys. Some people do not grow up. But they're happy. It's okay. Not everybody is meant to fucking have a fucking Mercedes or even have a car. Some people are meant just to fucking walk around and take the bus. Who at the, I took the bus when I was young. That was my my priority was not to have a nice car. I did not even have a nice car till I was like, shit, man, in my late twenties, guys, in like my late twenties, and I made a lot of money when I was making millions of dollars a year, which I you know, back then when I was finally made it. I drove a used $35,000 car. And here I am. This was like fucking 15 years ago or some shit, right? 15 years ago. Making him over a million dollars a year. 15 years ago. <laughs> With a $35,000 used BMW. Who the fuck does that, right guys? I could have bought a fucking Lambo 15 years ago if I wanted. You know, Lambos are much... <laughs> a million dollars back then was a lot of money, guys. But that was not my priority. My priority was to get my fucking, get it to the point where I'm gonna fucking work my ass off. It takes three years off. Get to the point where I'm able to now do what the fuck I wanna do. Say what the fuck I wanna say. Help whoever I wanna help. Not go to work when I don't wanna go work. <sighs> that, I know I, I said a lot. I don't know what the topic was today, but I felt over the weekend, I felt it needed to be said, guys. That you know what, to be honest, I, my whole, Sometimes in life, man, you go through these ups and downs and then you, you have these visions. And my vision was always before to push down everyone's door. You must do this. You must do this. 
You know, what the fuck are you wasting your potential? Why, why? Now I just realized, you know what, man? Not everybody's made to do the same things. And it's okay, guys. You know, it's okay. That's why we have the tab program. That's why we have people help each other like that, right, guys? Not everybody's going to be a superstar trader. Not everybody's going to be fucking have a six-pack. I know I will never have a six-pack, and I'm okay with that. You know why? Because having a six-pack means I got to fucking stop eating fuck. I got to stop fucking snacking. And that, that, to me, is not worth it for me. I may die 10 years before I should die because of unhealthy eating habits. And I'm okay with that. Some of you guys are okay with being normal financially. Okay? Some of you guys are okay with living paycheck to paycheck. And that's okay. As long as you're happy. As long as you know what you're doing. As long as you... But don't cry about it. And then make excuses. And say you want to fucking do this, do that. But you don't have your shit together. You make excuses, guys. And that's the one thing, man. I'm going to stop making excuses. You notice I, I don't make excuses. When I lose, I fucking lose. Last week, I had a big loss day. I bounced back, obviously. But, you know, that big day, I, I fucking told people I lost. I showed people I was off. I didn't, I didn't quit MIC. I stayed till the very fucking end and showed people my fucking loss. Even did a fucking live event to fucking talk about it. Did a webinar with Tosh to talk about it. It was, felt great. It was embarrassing as fuck. I own my fucking thing and I am dude that's the figment of the past now. Today's Monday. I don't fucking forgot what the fuck happened last week to be honest. I am now fucking I dude I was so razor sharp today. Let's take a look at my charts guys. I I'm like holy shit, I just pulled out a matrix or some shit today. <clears throat> and I woke up, literally, literally, I woke up and ran to my desk ten minutes before they opened. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Located my shit. I, I didn't even have time to get, be fearful. I didn't have time to panic. I just did what was instinctual that I've been doing for decades now. You can do it too. Keep it simple, guys. Last week, I lost. It's because I said I wanted to bank. I was like, this is my fucking opportunity to bank. I know Alex is going to kill it. First day, Reddit set up as his fucking strategy. But you know what? I am going to fucking kill it too. But I was one day too early. And that's what happened. It blew my fucking mind. And it's okay, guys. You don't have to be the best every fucking day. You know, there's no fucking competition. It should be only between yourself and the person you you were yesterday and become better. That's the only person that you need to fucking... When I fucking go in and I don't think about training, I am fucking on the money, man. But when I start to fucking deviate from my own process because I think I'm going to bank, bank, that's why I do not bank. Think about this. The biggest day that you bank... Are usually the days that you never thought you're gonna bank. You're gonna wake up and go, holy fuck, what the fuck happened? I just did well today. And the days that you 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 pressure yourself to doing well, you fuck up. <clears throat> so go into each day with a clear head, no pressure. Pressure is what kills people in life, guys. As an Asian, as an Asian, my, my parents pressured me to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, be an engineer, what the hell it is, pressured me to be the best. Pressure me to have fucking... I had 4.0. They wanted 4.4 GPA. I had fucking straight A's. They wanted fucking straight A++. Plus plus pluses. Just shit like that, guys. The pressure is what kills people. Each person in the, uh, has an individual uh, personality. Difference about them, right, guys? Just because someone is not academically book smart doesn't mean that they're dumb. Just because someone's book smart doesn't mean they're smart. Their life is more than just a bunch of numbers on the paper, guys. Look at my lifestyle. My lifestyle is not the best. But I, I do quite well. Knock on wood. You know, I do okay for myself, guys. I am, I am, this is why I'm showing the world that I don't, I don't, I didn't go to no fucking private, I didn't go to no fucking private school. I didn't go to no Ivy Leagues. My parents were, came from immigrants. They barely spoke, they, they, they actually spoke no English when they came over to America. I spoke no English. And look what we came out today, guys. You'll be very surprised. I speak with a perfect accent. You know, I speak like a California guy, obviously. But, uh, you know, people wouldn't be surprised I'm an immigrant. But I am. People are surprised by the color of my skin. So my whole point to you guys is this, man. We are all very individual-based. And it's that individuality that makes us great, guys. Because if, if everything is just based solely on numbers on the screen, your IQ, how good you look, how tall you are, how skinny you are, your weight, whatever. Dude, take a look at the most successful people in the world. The most unlikely people become the most successful. Fucking Jeff Bezos. <laughs> look, look at what he looked like back in the day, right? Look at him now. <laughs> Same thing with Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon Musk has Asperger's, right? That's kind of like a little fucked up little 
um, like, um, what's that? Like, um, Asperger's is like, what was that fucking shit that you get, up? Uh, uh, anyways, uh, he had some sort of, like, social skill issues, right? So, let me bring someone on. I love bringing someone on. It's been a long time. And then you can ask about my trades today, guys. Uh, that'd be better than that, because I, I went on a little rant today, guys. So, raise your hand. Who wants to come on? Each day I speak the facts, guys. People may not like me. I'm okay with not everybody liking me. I get trolled every day and it's okay. You know, every... online, people love to be liked by everybody online. In real person life, in real life. It's like online life is so different, so fucking weird. Like everyone wants to love each other, everyone wants to troll each other. You would not fucking come to my face. I would not come over to your face and talk shit about you because I don't get hit in the face. But for some reason, online, you can have a fucking five different fake troll accounts talking shit. You know, it's, it's weird. So treat your online life, guys. Use your social media to learn to better yourself, not just to fight with people online. All right, well, raise your hand who wants to talk. Uh, you don't have a camera to talk? I can't come on, bro, because uh, at least I'd be uh, Timbo. I'm so sorry. IG Live, you need a camera. How do you get on Instagram with no camera? I guess it's on um, your PC, right? Mr. Xander. All right, man. I'll bring on uh, the high schooler. Never drew. Hey. <laughs> What's up, brother? Not much. Shouldn't you be in class with you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got off for summer vacation last week. Oh, shit, man. Okay, tell everybody how old you are, who you are, where you live, and your name and all that stuff, man. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Xander Odom. Uh, I am 17 and in my junior year of high school. Uh, basically, I just started training with MIC like a month and a half ago, and it's been great. 17, bro. Where Where do you live? Give a uh, shout-out to your school. Central California. It's uh, I go, I Like, I go to school in Ridley. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh, my God. I, I wish, bro, that I started at 17. Maybe not. I, I'm not as disciplined as you are, man. I think <laughs> you you are more disciplined than me. If I started at 17, I might never trade. I would yeah. say I hate trading. It's a scam. So that's yeah. kind of about your journey. Like, uh, yeah. Talk, talk about your journey. Go ahead. So I started, like, I learned about trading when I was, like, 13 or something. But 14. it was just, yeah, it was just, like, me trading with $10 in Robinhood. Um, but, you know, I, I wasn't disciplined at that age like no one is. And so I didn't really take it seriously. Uh, I didn't start taking it seriously until, like, uh, January of 2021, uh, and I was just learning OTCs, but, you know, there was no process with OTCs, and so I decided to join MIC because I saw that everyone was talking about how good their mentorship is, and it's so true. Uh, like, already within a month, I've had, like, way more, way better results than trading with OTCs uh, on Listed, and it's, it's just been great so far. How'd you hear? So how'd you hear? You from a word of mouth? Is that what it is? I'm like seventeen yeah, yeah. years old, man. That's amazing, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad that I learned about trading so soon. So how tell people how you got started? Mean like, okay, you had ten dollars in your Robinhood. How did you be able to afford MIC? How are you able to trade these stocks now? So teach people how to get started. Right. Well, I mean, if you guys are above sixteen years old, then you are able to get a job. And, uh, I mean, if you, like, no, like, if you say you can't afford it, uh, I feel like there's some way you could get some money, maybe side hustles or just save every dime, like stop getting Starbucks every day. Don't, don't get the little things because every little dollar adds up. Uh, when I was like 16 and a half, uh, a half I got, um, a job at like a coffee shop and I've just been working there like 20 hours a week and it's all adding up. I have like a $3,000 account to trade with and also just start small. Cause that's all you need, dude. Dude, man, I I, I want to fucking give you a giant ass hug right now. I'll give you a high five, motherfucker. I love it, man. I, I'm gonna stop cursing because I'm not supposed to curse little kids, but dude, <laughs> listening to you, I'm like, holy cow! You are like, you sound like way above your age. You sound like a freaking role model that is gonna go back to your <laughs> high school and, and 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 be like hung up your name retired on the banner like this kid. <laughs> Make no excuses. 16 years old. Got a job in a coffee shop. Save his fucking money. Save his money to learn this. And and this and you know at this age, bro, it's all about learning. 
Because with a $10 account, you're not going to become rich. But you know what you're going to become? You're going to become process-driven. You're going to become discipline-driven. You're going to learn way ahead of other people. You're gonna, you know, this is like the military, man. You, you, you've done something more than, dude, most people have done in their entire lives already by 17, but. <laughs> yeah, and if you've worked hard, like do, doing any side hustles for like even 100 bucks, uh, trading with that 100 bucks will allow you to like feel the emotions of it because you know you worked hard for it. So what are you trading right now? Tell us what you're learning and what is, cause this is amazing, man. This is like the, it's like, dude, <laughs> guy, he's 17, Xander is 17 years old. What is your excuse? <laughs> right? Oh my God. Yeah. So, so basically right now, um, I, when I joined MIC, I started trading long because that's what I knew on, o, on the OTC side, but like, I wasn't understanding long, like I wasn't getting it. Uh, but I understood the short side, but I was always scared to short because you know, your losses are infinite, even though, like, I didn't think of hard stops. Uh, but, like, the rules that MIC, like, uh, talks about will keep you safe on the short side. And I just understood the short side a lot more. Like, I just, I saw, I saw the opportunity on it way more than long. And so, basically, like, right away, <laughs> I, I saw instant results. I was just uh, watching the watch list. Um I mean, I'm so far. I'm six for six on trades. I'm I'm waiting for a loss because I want losses to see what see where I can improve. <laughs> I'm just laughing. You guys hear that? He's doing so much <laughs> way more freaking loss to learn. That's fucking fucking amazing. And and the reason why you're not having these big losses is why? Tell everybody why. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just, like, I'm playing high probability setups. Uh, I started with like i I'm like four for four on low hanging fruits, and my last two trades were you know, the death candle through VWAP. And, and I'm starting to transition to that because I'm getting like better risk reward for, um, for my, my account being under PDT. Where are you, where are you trading at that's able to do this? Are you still at Robinhood? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I'm trading at trade <laughs> zero because you okay. know, I really want, Co I really want Cobra, but like uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a ways away from 25 K, <laughs> but trade zero yeah. has been really good. Okay, both of, those, both of those are our partners, so Grover is the best for USA, guys, and uh, Trade Zero, you don't have the money overseas or lower in the United States, so, oh my God, Xander, this is, I've never, I fucking, I, this is the first time we spoke each other face-to-face, -face. we talked to each yeah, other online, yeah. and I'm like, I, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm like, this 17-year-old kid, what's he, <laughs> I love people learning, but I'm like, I'm like, how can you take his focus, I, I know that the twin guys, they, those guys are freaking into it, you know, and I freaking yeah. love it, uh, so, yeah. So I'm like, dude, hey, Xander, I'll do this, man. I'll do this for you. Hey, Tosh, you're out. I'm going gonna, gonna to give you a free fucking gear at MIC, bro. Use that fucking, <laughs> take that $200 every fucking month. Put in your trading Seriously. account and fucking learn, bro. You are oh now fucking a free for your whole entire year, bro. It's fucking cool, man. I love, this is the least I could do. This is fucking amazing. You're going to be a fucking role model for every fucking person. Okay? That, that helps so much. That helps so much. Because I'm, I'm planning on opening a second account with Trade Zero. Because I'm under, I'm under 18, so I need my parents' social security to start an account. So I'm planning on using my mom's and my dad's to open two accounts. And so, dude, that's so smart. That's man, so smart. Thank you guys so much. Oh my God, dude! You're gonna open up a trading club. Your school and teach everybody. I want you to be the dude. This is this is amazing, man. You remember me one day. You'll be the next Jeff Bezos or something. <laughs> Actually, the next Steve, Steve Cohen, the big old trader guy. The next fucking, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you're going to be the big old hedge fund upcoming. You remember us, little guy? What are you picking there, Xander? You remember us? <laughs> oh, my God. This is amazing, man. I, I, I mean, guy, you heard it right here, man. I mean, I, I had no clue. I didn't know that he did all this work. To be honest, man, I, we, we have so many people, members at MIC. I want to get involved in everybody's life, but I just cannot do that. Because, like, dude, I, I have such a big heart. Because you see, man, I, I listen to you. Now I'm all like, like like fucking like you know i'm like so I'm, I, I wish i could help everybody but but i just cannot right and so the best way that i can help people is to help someone like yourself who in turn helps another person we call that pay it forward kind of thing right yeah and so I, I love the fact that you come on here man you've been you've been raising your hand for the past year to get on it live i see that <laughs> and i just thought you were in school you know so i said like, okay today and, and it's the consistency that i love you see that Xander is here waking up every freaking live he's on here asking to be on to show the people he's very i'm very proud of you brother thank your you parents, i'm telling tell your prayers i do you you know man yeah. and uh if you want to get sponsored Xander, for any 
trading meetup in your school area, let us know. Let Oliver know. We will sponsor every pizza party. You cannot have beer, obviously. You'll have Coca-Cola, Sprite. <laughs> we'll, pay, we'll pay for your fucking pizza parties, monthly pizza parties, whatever you need to do to, to get people excited at your age, at your school, your friends, to fucking learn a valuable skill, man. Yeah, and I'm going to Florida, Orlando uh, in July, so I'm planning on starting a meetup there. So if anyone wants to come, I'm going to be planning on after hours. Dude, I love it. I love it. This, this kid, I mean, dude, you guys, guys, I just talked about this whole thing, and this, this is the best ending I could ever have, man. I mean, this is, this, you, got, you made my day, brother. Uh, you Thank know? you. You <laughs> too. You too. <laughs> oh, man, this is awesome. Hey, Mac, get back to what you're doing. You're, you're working right now, Summer? Uh, yeah, I'm working over the summer. I might do some extra hours since now I don't have school. <laughs> Keep studying, man. Keep studying and hit up Tosh. Hit up Tosh. will hook you up on that, 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 yeah. that annual, bro. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, man. Love it, man. Thank you, man. I'll see you back in chat. All right. Bye. Guys, guys, I, I don't know how else to end it. This has been freaking amazing when I hear this stuff, man. This kid is pure motivation. Pure motivation. This kid has done... I'm not going to call him a kid anymore. This, this, I, I don't want to call him anymore. This is it's great. He's now a fellow member of MIC. He's a trader. He's a peer. Xander is now a peer. A peer meaning he's on our level. Meaning he's one of us. He's a trader. He's a day trader. He's a freaking day trader, man, at 17 years old. Hats off to Aiden, the twins as well. Man, big props to you guys, man. You guys want to get sponsored in your school, let us know. We'll sponsor and anybody, any of you guys that are in MSC that want to do a meetup, whatever, hit us up. We will sponsor it. We cannot be around the world, but we will freaking sponsor it, guys. Thanks, guys. This is the best motivation. That, this is Monday motivation right here, guys. Forget how much I made. Forget all that. You can go into my charts. It's the same process we teach. We'll see you at MIC. Thanks, Xander. Man, this is freaking awesome, man. We're going to post this all over the place, man. This is so amazing. Thanks, man. Catch you, man. I'll see you back in the room. Thanks, guys.